Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the structure of the basement membrane. Okay, right, so we're currently in the process of discussing the lamina denser of the basement membrane now, and I've told you that the lamina denser is going to be made out of collagen type 4 uh, molecules. Okay, so I want to tell you what uh, collagen type 4 is. So we've now looked at the structure of an individual collagen polypeptide. We've discussed that there are 45 different genes which code for individual collagen polypeptides. Okay, uh, and uh, a piece of terminology that you should be aware of is that uh, the individual polypeptide of a collagen molecule is known as an alpha chain. Okay, so these structures that we've been discussing, they will be called collagen alpha chains. Okay, so another alpha in this discussion. Okay, right, so the individual polypeptides that are going to make collagen molecules, they are called the alpha chains. So these alpha helices, uh, they're called the alpha chains. Okay, they are now going to assemble into trimers. So you're going to bring together three of these alpha chains, and you're going to assemble them into a larger structure. And this is going to be what's known as a super helix. Okay, so you're going to combine three alpha helices together to make what's known as a superhelix. Now, it's not going to form a coiled coiled domain. A coiled coiled domain is where the alpha helices remain separate, but they coil around one another. Okay, so just to remind you, this blue line would represent the entire alpha helix, and it would coil around another alpha helix, like so. In the case of collagen, what you're actually going to do is combine the alpha helices together to make a larger helix called structure, basically. Okay, so let's show this. So, here is one alpha helix of uh, a alpha chain of collagen. Okay, then what you're now going to do is you're going to entwine another one into this, basically, like so. So you're going to put in another alpha helix entwined with the first alpha helix. Okay, so let's try and highlight them up separately. Okay, so here is one of them in purple here. Okay, and I'm just sort of making this up now. And then there will be another one entwined with it. Okay, and then you're actually going to add on another one, which I'm not even going to attempt to draw. But basically, the concept, I hope, is clear, that you are going to entwine these alpha helices together to make this bigger structure known as a superhelix. And I hope you understand the difference between a superhelix and a coiled coiled domain. Okay, in a coiled coiled domain, you're just coiling the alpha helices. So this is one alpha helix completely separate here. And it's just sort of coiling around the other one. Okay, this turquoise one, which is a separate alpha helix. You're not actually combining the alpha helices together. In this super helix, you're combining them together to make one bigger structure, basically. Okay, so they are really coiling uh, with one another, basically, rather than just coiling around one another, like so. Okay, and when you combine three alpha chains of collagen together uh, to make a superhelix like this, this is then called a collagen molecule. Okay, right. Now, there are 28 different known types of collagen molecules, or, or classes of collagen molecules in humans, okay? So you have collagen 1, collagen 2, collagen 3, all the way up to collagen 28, okay? Which is given the Roman numeral XX, which means 10, 10, so that's 20, and then 8 uh, is here, okay? So that's 28 in Roman numerals here. Okay, right, so there are many different types of collagen. Now, we are specifically interested in collagen type 4, okay, or type 4 collagen. Okay, now, type 4 collagen is going to be trimers, like so, that are made up out of alpha chains that are coded for by certain genes, okay? So there are six different genes, which if you use the uh, collagen alpha chains coded for by these genes, you will end up with a type 4 collagen molecule. And these are called col for collagen, then you put a 4, and then you have col4a1, then you'll have col4a2, col4a3, col4a4, 
call for A5, and then call for A6. And these are the six different uh, alpha chains, which if you, you combine them together to make a superhelix, any three of these together to make a superhelix, then that's going to be a type 4 collagen uh, molecule. Okay, right. The other thing to mention is that you can either form homotrimers, where you combine three identical alpha chains together, or you can in fact form heterotrimers, where you form, uh, where you combine three different uh, alpha helices together, okay, to make the superhelix, okay? So there are homotrimers and heterotrimers. If you are collagen type 4, it means that the alpha chains that you have used to make your uh, collagen molecule belong to uh, this collection of six genes here, or this collection of six uh, alpha chains of collagen. Okay, right, so that's a collagen molecule now. What can then happen is these collagen molecules can all aggregate together to make a much bigger fiber, basically. And this bigger fiber is then going to be called a collagen fibril. Okay, and these are now visible with electron microscopy. Okay, so collagen fibrils are generally going to be around a, a couple of hundred micrometers in length. So I'll just put a hundred micrometers in length, okay, or longer. There'll be a few hundred micrometers in length, okay. And then in diameter, their diameter is around 10 uh, to 300 nanometers. So they've got a much thinner diameter than their length, okay. And they are visible with the electron microscope. Collagen fibrils can then aggregate into bigger structures yet, which are then known as collagen fibers. Okay, so you can aggregate loads of collagen fibrils together to produce collagen fibers. And collagen fibers then are actually visible with a light microscope. So um, when you stain a piece of tissue with certain dyes, you will see swirling collagen fibers when you look at it underneath the light microscope. This is what you are seeing, aggregates of collagen fibrils, which themselves are aggregates of collagen molecules, which themselves are made up of three separate collagen and polypeptides, also known as alpha chains. Okay, right. So, lamina densa then. Okay, coming back to the basement membrane. Okay, so let's draw our basement membrane where we've got to so far. Okay, so, here are our epithelial cells here. Okay, and remember, I'll draw four of these things here. So here is the nucleus of these epithelial cells. Right. Then the layer that's just underneath the epithelial cell layer is then what's known as the lamina lucida. Okay, so let's put this layer here. So remember, this layer will consist of, at the bottom, the laminin heads, which have all bound together, basically. Okay, and then poking up from that bottom, what you'll have is the coiled coil domains, uh, which, remember, consist of the uh, alpha helices of the free laminin proteins, the alpha, beta, and gamma laminin, uh, intertwining with one another. Okay, then you'll have uh, the five LG domains right at the end of that, which come from the alpha laminin, and those will be binding to integrins on the surface of the epithelial cells. Okay, right. Lamina densa then is going to consist of absolutely loads of type 4 collagen molecules. So loads of these molecules aggregated together to form fibrils, aggregated together to form fibers, a meshwork of collagen molecules. Okay, so this is type 4 collagen molecules. Okay, so to draw one of these, let's say this is an individual molecule. So what this means is three collagen polypeptides combined together to make a superhelix here. Okay, right. Um, so, how then do you attach the um, type 4 collagen molecules here to the laminins of the lamina lucida here? Okay, so let me just label this up. This layer of type 4 collagen, this is the lamina densa, okay? Whilst the layer of laminins here is the lamina lucida. 
Okay, well, there are many different ways that you can attach the uh, type 4 collagen uh, molecules to the laminins of the lamina lucida, but the one that I'm going to discuss is the nidogen proteins. Okay, so, in humans we have these two nidogen proteins, known as nidogen 1, which is often abbreviated to NID1, and then there's also nidogen 2, which is NID2. And the function of these nidogen proteins is to bind to the laminin heterotrimers here and also to the uh, collagen molecules here. So this is a nidogen protein sitting in the middle here. So I'll colour this in in purple. So it binds to both the collagen molecules, the type 4 collagen molecules, which remember are these superhelices of free alpha chains of collagen. Okay, and it also binds to the laminins in the lamina lucida here. Now, you remember I said I'd come back to why it was important that the heterotrimeric laminins um, contained usually a gamma 1 laminin. Well, this is it. The nitrogen proteins bind to the gamma 1 um, laminin, basically. So remember, laminins consist of those three separate laminin proteins. One was an alpha laminin, one was a beta, and one was a gamma. And there were five different alphas, three different betas, and three different gammas. But I said usually a laminin will have gamma 1 as its gamma uh, laminin. Okay, And it is the gamma 1 laminin that the nitrogen proteins bind to. Okay, And then they'll also bind to the uh, collagen type 4 molecule here, like so. And that's how they hold the uh, heads of the laminins here to the layer of collagen molecules here in the lamina densa. Okay, and that's how you hold the basement membrane together. Okay, so that now concludes our discussion of the structure of the basement membrane.